Hey guys, Pete here, and I uh, want to check in with you. Right now, Andy Murray, uh, or he was, playing a tournament, and um, it was it was hard to watch, and uh, it makes me really, as a fan, kind of uh, conflicted if if Murray should keep going. He's definitely he definitely has a new mountain to climb. And it is inspirational to see him on the court, uh, just like, and maybe we'll read some comments on, on, on the actual YouTube post I saw. It's inspirational to see Andy Murray on the court, uh, but it is also uh, kind of tough to watch. And, and somebody mentioned, I thought they, they put it perfectly, it's, uh, it, it, it reminds them of watching Venus Williams. It reminds them of watching what Venus Williams is now going through to where she loves tennis. She st hey, Tennis Paris Brothers. Uh, this is a live broadcast, by the way. So if you're watching the replay, people are commenting. And, and uh, it's nice to see people saying hello. And I want to get your opinion. You know, uh, Go look at the highlights of uh, Andy Murray playing his last match here in the small tournament they're playing. And let me know if you think that Murray is, you know, can wipe off the rust and get back to playing and be at a top 10 or top five player or is it just with everything he's been through physically that his time has passed i think venus williams watching her play i love watching her i think she's so inspirational she uh wants to keep going she loves tennis uh but you can see that when she plays somebody that can move fast and hit a hard ball that she just can't keep up anymore Kind of the same way that Serena played against Osaka. It, to me, it was just like didn't matter what what Serena could do; she just can't keep up, and that's a normal thing. And we never like to see it end. And and you know, Nadal and Djokovic, what he just did at the Australian Open, and we'll see what Federer does when he comes back. They've kind of spoiled us a bit, thinking that yeah, it's normal to be playing this amazing in your in your thirties. But Murray is now in his thirties, and he's and he's come back from from a pretty big hip surgery. And the positive thing, if you're a Murray fan, is he likes to say that he's pain free, that that he feels good, and that and if you're a Murray fan, that gets you excited because we know how great a tennis player he is. I don't think his ball striking is the problem, but when I see him play and watch these highlights, and I'm not going to play the highlights for you because uh, I'll probably get in trouble with with YouTube and and the ATP. They don't really like you to do that. So go check out the highlights on YouTube. We'll do a screen share here in a second so you can find it and we'll read some of the comments that I was reading. But uh, to me, I mean, it's hard to measure, you know, how much of, of him is he right now at this point? Is, is he 80% of his capabilities, 70% of his capabilities? I mean, to me, it looks like I would say 60 to 70% because Andy Murray – in his day, and 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 you you often forget you 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 know th time goes by, and you forget how amazing these players were, and and how just devastating their strengths were. And Andy Murray was one of the best movers on the tour, very underrated with his movement, extremely fast, extremely frustrating to play against because he could get to shots all over the place. I even have a visualization right now when Andy Murray first came on the tour of running off the court at Wimbledon where, where people just really began to fall in love with him, especially that's his own turf. I remember hitting, him hitting a backhand, kind of like a, a banana-like backhand that Rafa likes hit on the forehand, running off the court on the grass into the stands. Like that's how fast he was. He could go from one side to the other side get to drop shots, and he just lost a match to where he lost the first set 7-6, fairly competitive, but then the next set I think was 6-0 or 6-1. And the more the highlights kept playing, you could see he just couldn't keep up with this dude. Like it looks like if he's going to play anybody on the ATP level right now and they get in the zone and they just start feeling the ball, that they're going to out-hit him and and move better than him. and. And Murray, uh, you know, he can't play at the top level if he can't keep up movement-wise because that's a weapon of his. You know, movement, 
it's obvious to see a serve as a weapon. You know, when you see a 130, 140 mile an hour serve just drop the bomb drop, you're like, wow, that's a weapon. You, you see a forehand just scorching through the court, that's a weapon. Lots of times we take for granted how big a weapon movement is. And he does not have that right now, guys. Even if he's not feeling pain, to me, in, in between points, he's developed a limp on the court. It just looks very labored. It doesn't look smooth at all to me. What do you guys think? Uh, his confidence will come with fitness level. That's true. But, you know, I mean, look at Andy. That's an interesting comment. I'm reading comments saying his confidence will come with fitness level. I believe Murray is extremely fit right now. I don't think he can get fitter, right? Uh, we'll take a look at some screenshots or, or maybe I'll play this a little bit, but the guy looks fit to me. It's not like, I mean, he looks like he's all muscle. I, I don't think he can get in better shape. It's just that that hip is not allowing him to be a gazelle like he used to be. Andy Murray was fast, guys. He was quick and he was fast and he was crafty. He would bait you into stuff and make you make mistakes and then just out you know, cat and mouse you. That's a lot of his game. I don't think you can do that with people anymore because you need to be quick. To outbox people, you need to be quick. You need to bait them into little things and then you got them. Like like uh, Pete Sampras used to hang out on the backhand side and bait you to hit a ball over in the forehand side and then he'd run out there and he'd smack a forehand winner like nine miles an hour cross court right by you and you watch it. I don't think Murray can do little things like that anymore. Uh, Wild Live One says, is Murray without explosive movement even top 20? That's the thing. I don't think so. You, you can't play in today's game and not have your movement unless you are somebody like John Isner, who, again, John Isner moves a lot better than you guys might understand. Oh, I'm getting a knock on the door. <laughs> so we've got to cut this short. Leave your comments. I'll be right there. B2 is going excited too. Anyway, leave your comments on this. See you guys.